Well, hi there. Not quite ready yet, but uh, I'm just having a shower. I'll be right with you, okay? Hold that thought. Ah, that's better. All showered up and what a beautiful day it is out here. Well, to begin with, I'm not a fancy person. That's why some of my happiest times are out on my little e-bike that I've been driving for uh, four years now. And it's just such a wonderful feeling to drive past gas stations and just wave to the gas station owner and not buy any fuel. Uh, I've been driving it uh, four years now and uh, yeah, I, I love it. So uh, today we're going to do a little bit of grocery shopping. Ziggy's coleslaw, best on the planet. Two cases of water and a container of coleslaw. Breakfast of champions. Price of gas these days grosses me out. That's why a lot of these uh, Facebook and uh, our uh, Camp blog, uh, blog sites and all that include the uh, price of gas and it's going down. I really want to let you know because <laughs> who the heck wants to pay any more for gas than they have to, right? So now as far as hobbies go, the truth of the matter is, I got too many. I like woodworking, I enjoy metalworking, I enjoy working with leather, uh, I enjoy making videos, and uh, of course my radio work keeps me occupied. Uh, I like gardening, I don't like weeding though, I don't like weeding, uh, but cutting the grass and doing the trimming, you know, at the end of the day when you can stand back and say, hey, I made that look nice, uh, that's a good feeling. Um, pet causes here in town. Well, uh, I, I still have a very soft spot for the uh, uh, Multiple Sclerosis Society, Hamilton Chapter. I just wrapped up uh, three um, um, years on the board of directors with the uh, MS Society. And uh, now I'm concentrating more on uh, work with um, Hamilton Food Chair, uh, especially neighbor to neighbor here on Hamilton Mountain because they do so much good for so many people. They not only provide uh, food services, but they also uh, uh, you know, do counseling for people and help them get jobs and, and point them in the right direction. They're, they're a great uh, agency. If you can do anything to help neighbor to neighbor here on Hamilton Mountain, that's great. And uh, another one of my uh, pet causes this fall is um, Megan McLeod uh, here in Hamilton. She's uh, gathering coats once again for people who don't have uh, anything warm to wear this winter. So uh, actually all three of our radio stations are throwing our support behind Megan. Uh, she's doing her work through Pinky Lewis uh, Rec Center down in the inner city and we really, really want to help her. Anyways, uh, let's take a break from that. I got to get into the station because the radio show starts in just about an hour. So here we are in uh, Master Control of 820 Cham, which is one of my favorite places to hang out because I enjoy doing my radio show. I've always said that uh, if you enjoy what you do, hang on, I'll just turn that down a little bit. If you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life. And uh, I've been in, uh, so far, I've uh, been in radio 30 years, so I've never really had to have a job. Yeah, I started out in radio at our sister station, CKFC, back uh, in 1979 while I was in college, then took a little trip up to Belleville for a while, worked there, and then I came back to a radio station in Burlington, and then I spent uh, 25 years at our sister station here at Astro Hamilton, and uh, just uh, recently, in the, in the summer of 2011, I uh, uh, took over the afternoon slot here at 820 Cham, and I'm loving it. You know what, the, Can the, uh, the country listeners here in Canada are so friendly, so uh, welcoming, and so genuine that I, I, I feel very comfortable here. I think I feel more comfortable on 820 Cham already. Uh, than I ever did on our sister station. Um, and, and that's saying a lot because you know what? The uh, listeners on our sister station, uh, K-Light FM, uh, were very, very good to me. Wonderful people and they stood by me for 25 years and uh, I had one of the highest rated shows there uh, in, in Hamilton. And I'm hoping to do the same thing here in uh, uh, at, at 20 Champs. So cross your fingers for me, okay? Because if I got good ratings, then I get to stay. <laughs> I don't want to leave. That's okay, you can pour that out. This is my other oh, favorite yeah. place to hang out on a nice morning. Pour it nice. What's it? I'm sorry, what's that? Don't Hi there. That. Don't do that. I'm, I'm Peter Jaycock from 820 Champ. Can you, will you be on my blog? <laughs> I don't know how you blog. Okay. Oh, don't be shy now. It'll be on our website, is that okay? Oh, okay. All right, I knew it. What's your name? Colleen. Hi, Colleen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, thank you for that delicious coffee you're making. Oh, there. you're welcome. Cool. This is my other little happiness vehicle. Uh, 1974 MGB that I built for myself. 
Uh, finished it about 21 years ago. Been driving it ever since. And on a nice sunny day with no top over your head, it is a nice way to get a tan, I gotta tell you. This car has fun written all over it. Okay, I'm late for a meeting with the uh, executive assistant to the general manager. Uh, Carrie has got questions for me that we took from uh, uh, Facebook uh, readers. Uh, people who wanted to know something about me, so I gotta get down to the board because she's waiting for me. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh. Carrie, how you doing? I'm good, Peter. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. So you, you uh, compiled all the Facebook uh, questions? That... I, I have. Are you ready? What have we got? Two? We've got quite a few. You'd really? be surprised. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. You're ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. All right. Kathy Orland asks, how long have you been broadcasting? What time is it now? <laughs> um, since uh, 1981. Wow. 30 years. Alrighty. There we go. And she also asks, do you drink coffee while you're working? Oh it's, yeah. It's kind of a two-part question. Oh. Also, how do you manage to take your bathroom break? Oh, that's easy. Yes, we drink coffee uh, at the station. Uh, I don't think there's anybody really here uh, who's on here who doesn't drink this stuff because it uh, keeps you uh, paying attention to the show and uh, prevents the show from hitting a guardrail. <laughs> Good point. And one more thing. What do you like about your job? Oh, what's not to like? The, the music. You get to talk to some of the nicest listeners. Um, yeah, you know, it's a creative outlet. You get to you know, make jokes and of course you never hear anybody laughing because there's nobody in the booth with you, but uh, just so many different things, you know, the, sometimes you get to talk to famous people and find out about them on a first-hand basis, so yeah, there's a lot of things to like about it. Very nice. Craig Hewn asks, who are your favorite bands and who has been your favorite to interview? Oh, uh, nowadays, it'd be hard to say, you know, the Zac Brown Band, uh, there's so many of them. Lady Antebellum uh, is on my current hit list of favorites. There's just so many good ones. It'd be hard to pick one. Okay. Oh. Scott Bryan asks, has country music always been in your blood? No. Uh, that started, as I say, in the 1970s. Uh, we had a cottage. My parents had a cottage in the upper Ottawa Valley. And country music was about all you could get on the radio up there. So we listened to it all the time. And I started liking it then. Oh, nice. Yeah. And yeah. he also asked, what is your most fond memory of the radio industry? I guess it would have to be meeting Paul McCartney down in Toronto. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah it was only a fleeting thing, but uh, it was it was a blast meeting one of the Beatles. He also follows up with, who has, been, who has had the biggest impact on your career? Well, I guess I would have to pick two people. My brother, for one, because he was in radio before me, and I saw how much fun he was having, mm -hmm. or seemed to be having anyways. And uh, so I sort of followed in his footsteps, but then there was a guy named Nevin Grant, who used to be the program director of our three stations here, and he was the one who uh, gave me my break. And uh, I've always been eternally grateful to Nevin Grant. Mm -hmm. Erica Steinbach asked, did you always want to work in radio? No, no, no. I, I originally wanted to be uh, a race car driver, and uh, I also wanted to be a car mechanic. But I worked at a car dealership washing cars when I was 16 and I saw all the uh, frustrations that the mechanics had fixing the cars. First day I learned six new swear words. <laughs> yeah, gives you an idea. And uh, after seeing a few uh, car crashes in uh, races, I thought, no, nah, it's probably not you know, something that I'd be you know, all that good at. So. She also asked, did you have a favorite radio host who you admired when you first started out? Or did you have someone who you aspired to be like? That's a good question. Um, well, there was a guy who worked for our sister station in Toronto, Ted Wallachin, who uh, I really respected and thought he did a good job of interviews and that sort of thing. So uh, I don't know whether I ever wanted to be exactly like him or not. But uh, and of course, my brother, you know, who was uh, always friendly with the listeners back in the 1960s on our sister station CKOC. And uh, yeah, I, I always thought, man, yeah, it wouldn't be bad to be like him. Very nice. What is the hardest part about being on the air? Uh, not being on the beach. <laughs> that's that's about it. Yeah. Born to be on the beach. That's it. <laughs> um, what would your last meal be if you knew you wouldn't wake up tomorrow? 
Pizza, next question. Wow, easy one, easy one. Megan Jones asks, how many people in grade 13 told you that you would make an excellent DJ? Uh, well, Megan and I, we did go to high school together. Megan was a dear, sweet girl back then. I think she was actually the only one who told me I'd be an excellent DJ. Um, no, no, there might have been a few, uh, because I, I was just jockeying lunchtime dances at uh, Southmont Secondary School, and, and a few people said, hey, damn, he's good at that. Look at that. Even though the records were skipping half the time. Oh. <laughs> Susan Lewis Daly asks, if you didn't become a DJ, what job do you think you'd be doing? I'd be in jail. I know <laughs> I'd be in jail. I don't know. Right now, um, I, I, I thought, uh, well, I could have been an engineer because I'm interested in engineering. I uh, could have been a carpenter, or I could have been a movie producer because uh, I like doing videos. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Ava Green asks, what are you most grateful for? What was your first break and what opportunities are you grateful for that have come along during your career? I guess just the, uh, the opportunities to you know, have the longevity in, in one building and have a listenership that uh, has stuck with me for so long. And uh, the first big break, yeah, it was uh, when I was in college with Nevin Grant, as I mentioned before. He stuck me on uh, CKOC, our sister station, and gave me a chance doing overnighters and Saturday evening uh, assignments. And uh, that was the beginning of learning format radio. And there you go. Very good. Thank you, Peter. Well, thank you, Carrie. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Okay, thank you. <laughs> So there you have it, you know a few things anyways that you didn't know before about Peter J. Gott, for good or for bad. And uh, thanks for watching the video. And more than anything, thank you very much for being one of my listeners to 820 Cham. I really appreciate that. And uh, I'm grateful for every person who turns on the radio each day and enjoys the show. If that's you, thanks very much. Have a great day. I got a broadcast to do from Carmen's here, so I'm gonna do that. You have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.